This is music and this is still the summer of Simon. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of The Summer of Simon. It's a sub-series of the First Impressions series. And in this sub-series, I share with you my first impressions of, and uh, basically I follow up on, the items in uh, VCLT that was very overwhelming that was sent to me by none other than Simon from the Pie Face channel. Go and check out his channel. This time I have a handful of CDs, so let's get down to business up first. Uh, the Open Door by Evanescence. I do have the Digipack stored somewhere else. Don't you worry. Don't you panic. Don't you care because it's my collection. Anyways, uh, Evanescence, they are a band I never really got into. I'm too old. Uh, and by that I mean I'm not of the generation that got into this style of music. As we all know, the sort of music you get into is very much a generational thing. What kind of music was out when you reached your formative years and all that stuff. Uh, but this is not bad. The vocals are very good. To me, the vocals are the key point, the attraction point uh, to this album. I don't remember the singer's name, but she has a very good voice. Um, the instrumental part, the music is a little bit more meh to me, if I'm being honest. The guitar riffage is very often like kind of generic new metal style guitar riffage but overall this is not a bad album to me it's good music to have on in the background while working or doing other things around the house i know this will offend a lot of people because there are a lot of people to whom uh, evanescence really resonates with their soul and all that stuff and i get that and i respect that uh, that's great but to me it's more like music i like having on in the background and that's a win to me because i appreciate music like that up next something quite different exodus good friendly violent fun a live album with eight tracks they're all classics i would say fabulous disaster chemical till death do us part toxic walls of course uh cajun hell corruption brain dead and then there's a really cool cover version of dirty deeps done dirt cheap by acdc so this is a very live sounding live album it's very rough around the edges. It's very authentic. You can hear when the guitars um, are not quite in sync in the rhythm parts. Um, you can hear when small mistakes are made. There's a lot of audience noise. They have opted to leave in a lot of the stage banter between Zetro and the audience. Uh, Zetro sounds awesome on here, by the way. The production is pretty cool. They've captured that razor blade uh, style guitar uh, tone that they have on fabulous disaster and impact is imminent so i think that's very cool um, so it's a very authentic sounding live album um, so it captures that very authentic live energy the one weird thing however is that there are fade outs between some of the songs so you have you'll have places where zetro has riled up the audience and then it fades out. And that's a bit weird. Other than that, if you like thrash metal, if you like live albums, and if you like the live sounding live albums with lots of audience noise and all that stuff, check this one out. I enjoyed it actually. I had heard that one before, by the way, because back in the day, one of my uh, friends and bandmates, I think had that one on vinyl, I think, or maybe on CD, but he had it and we would listen to it every now and then. Up next, Fen Trails Out of Gloom. I thought this was going to be prog rock, but to my ears, it's it's more like alternative rock. It has it has that miserablest uh, feel to it that a lot of 90s kind of grunge adjacent, I would say, even grunge rock as well had, although this is not grungy, I think. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, the vocals, I think, are great. They're very emotional. Uh, there are some very um, impressive falsettos, very emotional sounding falsettos here too. So that's great. Um, but there's not a song on here that kind of stands out to me, but it's overall pretty uh, 
pretty enjoyable and just like the Evanescence one, this is stuff that I appreciate having on in the background. Again, I know I'll offend a lot of fans, but to me, music I can have on in the background is music I appreciate. And I can't have any old type of music on in the background. If it's if I don't like it, I, I can't concentrate uh, on whatever I'm doing. So it is music I like that I have on in the background. Up next, Hawkwind. And this one is called uh, Do Re Mi Fa Sol Li. Uh, Faso Latito, so you know, um, scale or whatever. So this this is prog rock, space rock. Lemmy is on here, and you do hear his voice. Um, so it's very psychedelic uh, from back in the day, and then you have a layer of spacey sounding keyboards on top. Uh, it's very repetitive, very uh, entrancing, I would say. Very interesting. Um, if you like your progressive rock, if you like your modern progressive rock, and you're curious about the history of prog rock, this one is is uh, worth checking out for sure. Very spacey sounding. Like I said, you can hear Lemmy's voice on here. A lot of it reminds me of, of uh, a more spaced out version of Burning Red Ivanhoe. Um, because of its repetitive nature, the spacey keyboards on top of it, the psychedelic nature, while I find this very interesting, it's also music that will primarily be background music for me. And again, I'll offend a lot of people. Hawkwind, they have a lot of fans. Again, I like to listen to music that I like as background music. So this is a win to me as well. Up next, we have this one here, House of Lords, and it's called uh, Sahara. Uh, very interesting to listen to this one amidst all the kind of more kind of background-ish kind of music. Um, this is hard rock, AOR tinged hard rock, uh, very melodic, very catchy choruses, uh, even some kind of um, symphonic elements, which I think is interesting. But it's very 80s sounding hard rock, very polished, uh, very AOR-ish, very good. I actually really enjoy this. Um, Melodic, catchy, uh, good guitar riffs, nothing out of the ordinary. And I like the sort of epic uh, layer that is added to it. So very enjoyable stuff. Um, Kiss of Fire, the last song is a banger. Um, very enjoyable. I, this is stuff I'll, I'll listen to, not just as background music, that's for sure. Really good stuff. And up last, some very different stuff. Uh, M People. It's called Fresco, um, 90s pop, um, kind of all over the, the place when it comes to 90s pop. So you have some kind of a little bit of disco inspired music. You have some um, hip hop light inspired music. You have some kind of hip hop ish beats. Uh, you have some, you know, unch unch ish music as well. And you even have some, again, very light and gentle. Um, um the prodigy style drum beats um so this is it's not bad it's not the kind of music i normally listen to but it's not bad uh the singer i don't remember what she's called but uh she has a very cool voice i really like her voice uh my favorite song on here is uh called smile which sounds a little bit like 90s uh, depeche mode kind of a heavy song not like rock heavy but heavy and gloomy and all that stuff uh, so I think Smile is a very cool song. So yeah, this was uh, enjoyable to me. Uh, not the kind of music I normally listen to, but I can certainly appreciate a lot of the uh, the songs on here. So that, that was an interesting experience. And like I said, Smile is actually a very good song. So there you go. Uh, in this case, a lot of music that I can appreciate as music in the background. And then you have a couple of, of these CDs that kind of stood out a little bit more to me. Uh, but there you go. Go and check out the Pie Face channel for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>